Hey, Andrew Tillman here with ADSR Sounds. In this week's video, I have some tips on creating bass lines in your machine projects. Um, so first off, let's take a look at the project I'll be working with. As you can hear, it's just a sample and some drums, and I wanna go ahead and add some bass. Um, for me, when I'm working with my projects, I'll usually add the bass I'm pretty close to the end of all the instruments. Um, so I usually do my main sample, my main instruments, then my drums, then any supporting instruments, and then my bass. And that's just personal preference. Um, whatever you're doing in your own projects is obviously going to depend on your own tastes. Um, but just for me, I sort of add the bass near the end. Um, so the process here is just going to be um, first choosing your bass sound and then deciding how to sequence in the bass line and get it to cooperate with the rest of the track. So a lot of people ask me what bass sounds I use. Um, sometimes I'll use uh, Native Instruments VSTs, such as Massive or Monarch, um, but most of the time, to be honest with you, I'm just using the Machine Stock Bass. Um, it comes with Machine and it's called Sub Bass 1. Um, it's just a super basic sub bass, but it sounds really good, and it's uh, sort of a foundation that you can use and add your own effects on top of it to get the specific sound that you want to use in your project. Um, so again, that is sub bass number one, and that is what I have loaded on this pad here on my group C. So I have it loaded up, and I wanna go ahead and figure out what's actually gonna sound good with the rest of my project. Um, so when I'm working with these low, deep frequencies, it can be really hard to actually hear what is in tune with the rest of the project. Um, so to go around this, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the pad mode menu and just bring the octave way up. And so this is not going to sound good if I actually record this. It's just a tool to use to sort of make sure that the bass line is going to be cooperating with the rest of the project. Um, so now that I can actually hear the notes, hear the pitches, I'll go ahead and play back the project and then figure out which of these notes on the pads sounds good with the, with the sample. So playing around, I can hear that this note here, going up a fifth, this sounds good, and the octave is obviously going to sound good as well. Um, so if you have some music theory background, this can help um, sort of knowing the intervals and, and stuff that usually work, um, but you can also just do it by ear playing around and figuring out what sounds good um, just by messing around. Um, so anyways, I have the notes picked out. It's pretty simple, and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, play around with these and sort of figure out a melody well, not a melody, but a bass line that works well with the rest of the instruments. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to keep the notes that I'm actually playing pretty short. I don't like to have really long drawn out um, notes in this low frequency range, something like this. In some projects that will sound good, and again it's up to your personal taste, but for me I like to get these short notes and get some cool rhythms going, so maybe something like that. And it's also a good idea to keep the kick drum in mind since the bass and the kick drum are sort of competing for that low end, um, so just uh, keep that in mind and make sure that they're not uh, sort of overriding each other. You can hear as the sample changes, um, there's one sort of weird sounding slice here. It's this one over here. And depending on your project, you might have um, sort of some variations on the samples or the melody. Um, so I like to make sure that my bass line sort of fits those. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I actually did this beforehand. Um, this note here, it's not in the usual uh, octaves or the fifth, it's a, it's a sharp up from the fifth and that is actually going to fit that odd section. So it sounds something like this. So obviously this is all going to depend on what you're working with. And if you have any weird sections, you need to make sure that your baseline cooperates with those as well as the main parts of your project. Um, but just play around with these and make sure, uh, make sure you like the sound and once you do that, go ahead and create a pattern, make it as long as you need, and then go ahead and just record it. So go ahead and do that now. And 
it's always a good idea, I think, to create a new pattern and then uh, just make it as long as the other one was and just make sure that you have sort of two variations on that theme. Um, another thing I like to do is um, sort of do an interesting first beat on the bass line. So instead of starting with this low note, I'll start with the high one and then go down to that one. And that would sound good if you had some drums like this. Sort of hear that cool reverse sound. So let's go ahead and record a new pattern and get that variation in. So just like that, I have two different bass lines I can choose from when it comes time to arrange, and these bass lines work well with the rest of the project. Um, I also add some additional effects on top of the bass. Um, so for this one, I have, let's get out of here and take a look, I have a compressor. I will uh, enable that and a saturator. And so those make the bass, um, the, this, the compressor is side chained to the kick drum, um, just to make sure those low frequencies don't compete and the saturator is just in there a little bit just to add some subtle high harmonics to the sub bass. Um, instead of that super low frequency, it adds a little bit of those high frequencies, which makes it a little bit easier to cut through the mix. Um, so overall, everything sounds like this put together. So thanks for watching this week's video, I hope you find it helpful. As always, if you have any questions, just leave them below in the comments, and I check those pretty often. And if you don't have any questions, thanks for watching, and I will see you on next week's video.